Today's gospel lesson is taken from Matthew 28, the Great Commission, when Jesus sends his disciples out to the entire world to baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. The message is go. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The congregation may be seated. The beginning and the end, the new and the old. Today, we experience chapters of our life coming to an end, and we also experience the beginning of something new. A change of seasons, a transition. For the last nine months, we have journeyed through the Bible from the beginning to the end from Genesis to Revelation. And I know all of you have heard me say this before, but where does the Bible begin? At the beginning. Where does the Bible end? At the end. And where do you fit in? Somewhere in the middle. God's story is your story, and your story is God's story. Did you notice when we read Genesis and Revelation that the story of God begins with the tree of life and the story of God ends with the tree of life? The question is, what happens in between in this journey of life? Today, of course, we're recognizing our graduating seniors. I've got a few slides ready, and I think parents are going to appreciate this. The first day of school when you're sending them off, pulling them away, and the first day of college trying to hold on. This next slide, I like the NDSU fans are going to love it. What did the buffalo say to his son before he left for college? Bye, son. Get it? (laughs) Goodbye, son. Now, I know that for some of the parents, they're grieving this change in empty nesters. There are several of them that are becoming empty nesters And I know that's difficult. We could change some of these names. Now that the last child is finally left for college, let's say Randy and Julie went through the usual empty nest grieving process. (laughs) It doesn't look like they're grieving too deeply. I'm just kidding. I know this is difficult. This week in Bible study, somebody asked me, what questions will you address our graduating seniors? And I do have some questions for you. Four questions. Where have you been? Where are you going? What did you take? And what are you going to give? So first of all, where have you been? It tends to be a trend in Lutheran churches that when kids are confirmed, we don't see them until Senior Recognition Sunday at graduation time. And there's an old joke that on Senior Recognition Sunday, we don't actually recognize any of the seniors because we haven't seen them for a couple of years. That's not the case at our seniors. In fact, we have 21 graduating seniors in the entire class in Hillsboro. We have 13 that are members here, 14 that we're recognizing today. We also have five that go to other schools that have participated actively in ministry here. In other words, there's 21 graduating in the class. We have 19 that have been active in ministry here. 14 of these graduating seniors have participated in major mission trips that we've done together. Not only do we recognize you, we know you, 
and we love you. Where have you been? Well, the truth is, they've been right here in worship, on mission trips, with the bands, and at youth group. I know this because almost every Wednesday night I get a text message from a parent asking if their kid is still at church at about 10 o'clock and saying, send him home. <laughs> the second question, what will you take? Now, I'm not accusing you of stealing anything. I'm talking about lessons, experiences, and memories. As, if, as I thought about this group of seniors, there were a lot of stories and a lot of scripture that came to mind. Of course, Genesis and Revelation, the beginning and the end, recognizing that a change and trans transition is happening. Also, our gospel text, the Great Commission, go out into the world, I think, fitting and appropriate for these seniors that are launching into life. But all of these other scripture passages just kept coming to mind. And so I put a few more of them in the bulletin. You're welcome to follow along in the bulletin if you'd like to. Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster. So that you can have a future and a hope. What a plan. From Deuteronomy 6, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. Keep these words that I am commanding you today in your heart. Recite them to your children and talk about them when you are at home and when you are away, when you lie down and when you rise up. Bind them as a sign on your hands. Fix them as an emblem on your forehead and write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. You'll notice when you walk out of the sanctuary, we have all 19 of those youth or young adults that are above the doorframe. And when we pass in and out of this building, we pray for you. 2 Corinthians 3 talks about letters of recommendation of those 19 seniors that I've talked about, I think I wrote a letter of recommendation for every one of them. The text says this. Are we beginning to commend ourselves again? Surely we do not need, as some do, letters of recommendation. To you or from you, do we? You yourselves are our letter, written on our hearts, to be known and read by all. And you show that you are a letter of Christ prepared by us, written not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God. Not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of human hearts. And from Matthew 13, the wise person goes to the treasure and takes something new and something old. This, this, of course, is exactly what we hope for our young people. To learn from the old. This is our hope. From Sunday school to VBS, from confirmation to youth group and mission trips, from worship to countless conversations in the youth room or my office or on a bus trip. We hope you have learned something. We hope you've experienced something good. We hope that you have been shaped and honed by your experiences of faith. Our worship theme for this year has been marked. Marked by the cross of Christ in this journey that God has marked before us. We celebrate the sacrament of baptism today. And we'll make the sign of the cross saying, you've been marked with the cross of Christ forever. Not for the first 18 years of your life but forever. This is our hope. That you've been marked with the cross of Christ. And in this journey that God has laid out and marked for us. This is our hope. Not only for our graduating seniors, but for all of us. That we have been shaped, honed, changed, and marked by this experience of faith. And what an experience it has been.
Now, I'm not foolish enough to think that every one of your high school memories is from church, but we really have had some great experiences. Trips to Kansas City, Memphis, New Orleans, to Minneapolis, St. Paul, to Wisconsin Dells, Nashville, J.D.'s Place in South Carolina, to Give Kids the World, Make-A-Wish Village in Orlando, Florida, and to the National Youth Convention in Detroit, Michigan. We have had shared experiences of faith. Now, when these guys shared downstairs some of their favorite memories, now I have the microphone, and I get to share a few of my favorite memories. When we were in New Orleans and we were doing a service project in the bayou, it seems that Ben Connect and I remember this slightly differently. I was under the water picking up these things that we were going to transplant, and I'm trying to keep an eye on all of the kids, and I know where Ben Connect is. He's over here, and I come up out of the water, and I look, and he's gone. I'm looking around for him. I think, where could have he gone? He couldn't have gone anywhere. He was right there. All of a sudden, I see these bubbles coming up, and I thought, oh my gosh, he's drowning. And so I run through the water, and I, I get there, and I reach down into this muddy water, and I'm looking for him, and I feel his head, and I kind of grab his head, and he comes up out of the water, and he says, Pastor Joe, why are you trying, trying to drown me? <laughs> I said, Ben, I thought you were drowning. I was trying to save you. I'm glad we didn't lose you that day, Ben. <laughs> One of the things I like about this group is they've been a nickname group. ZS. 2450JP and one of the best nicknames ever, Moondog. <laughs> well, that same day, Moondog got attacked by these fire ants and he had an allergic reaction to it. We got it under control and he ended up being okay. The next year, when we went on a trip to Florida, he got attacked by the fire ants again. Now, he blames me for this, but what's the common denominator? Moondog. <laughs> Although we don't remember what state we were in, I think it was Tennessee, and Nadia Rob challenged me to a dance-off, a dance contest. Well, I thought I could take her, so I took her up on it, and, and so we danced outside of the, the bus, and of course she beat me, she's a trained dancer, and that's when I learned, don't wrestle the wrestlers, and don't dance off with the dancers. From bus surfing through South Carolina, to teaching 25 North Dakota kids how to really surf at Cocoa Beach. What a memory. One of my favorite memories was when we were doing highs, lows, and God sightings at JD's pool in South Carolina. And I don't know exactly how it started, but a low was that I didn't do a one and a half off the diving board, which is a flip into a, uh, a dive into the pool. That was the other thing that brought me to the chiropractor, and so I try not to do those things anymore. And they started chanting my name, what could I do? Fully clothed to the diving board, a one and a half into the pool. Well, they started chanting Amanda's name, my wife, and, and she wouldn't do it. And so the next person to do highs, lows, and God sightings was Logan Forseth, and and he said, well, my low of the day is finding out that Amanda can't hang. <laughs> so they start chanting Amanda's name again. There she goes to the diving board, fully clothed and into the pool. I'll always remember the swimming suit showers from a garden hose in downtown Nashville. And all those people thought we were homeless. <laughs> when we were on the Florida trip, we were working at Give Kids the World, which is Make-A-Wish Village, where Make-A-Wish kids and their families stay when their wishes are being fulfilled. Well, we served there for three days, and one of the jobs that we had was to drive the train. Well, I was the driver of the train, and Jake Preston was in the back helping people on and off and visiting as we gave them a ride to where they were going within the park. Well, we got to the end of the night, and we were supposed to bring the train back to where it was supposed to be, but all these people still needed rides. Well, we had these rules that we were supposed to have the train back, and you know, I say a train, but it was really kind of a glorified golf cart and uh, running on a battery. We said, well, we're supposed to have it back. What do you think, Jake? And he looked at those kids that were sick in their families, and he said, how do we tell them no? He said, the train might die, but it's going to be for a good reason. 
We said, all aboard, <laughs> they got on. We brought them to where they were going, and halfway back, the train died. <laughs> you know, some of the best memories have been right here. Playing music and singing after youth group, kickball, boot hockey, movies, and devotions. And one of my favorite memories are the countless conversations that happened in various places, including the youth room and my office. There's a couple of Logan Busick quotes that I use all the time. I don't want to say what I did to constitute this response, but everybody was kind of confused, and Logan Busick said, you're a weird guy, Pastor Joe. <laughs> but my favorite Logan Busick quote was at the end of their eighth grade year. And that was the year that we had a lot of you share your stories of loss and healing. Elaine and Harvey and a variety of other people shared their stories of loss. And at the end of that confirmation year, I asked those eighth graders, what's one thing that you're going to remember from this year forever? And Logan Busick raised his hand. It was the first time he'd ever raised his hand in confirmation. And so I called on him. And he said, when I hear those people's stories, I see them differently. You see, this is how church works. When we share in each other's stories, our stories become one. Their story becomes your story. And your story is God's stuff. What are you going to take with you? I hope you take with you lessons of life, memories and experiences. I hope you've been shaped and honed. I hope this story is not written just on paper, but written on your hearts and your hands, written on your foreheads, marked with the cross of Christ forever. The next question. Where are you going? This is an exciting time of the year, and for you it's an exciting time of life. Whether you're going to school or going to work, whether you're going to Mayville or to Mary, UND, Wapiton, or NDSU, go. Go and make disciples of all nations. Go out into the world. But go in faith. It's okay to doubt. It's also okay to believe. And know that wherever you go, you don't go alone. From today's gospel, now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus directed them. And Jesus said, remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. We don't go aimless. We don't go chasing our tail or spinning in circles, although that's a part of the story of life. But we also go with direction, directed by God. The eleven went to the mountain to which Jesus directed them and said, remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Go. Go find a church. Get involved in campus ministry. Be a young adult leader on these trips that you've been on as a youth. Go, but also come home. Do any of you remember that story about Bo when we were in Minneapolis, St. Paul? It was a homeless man that told his story to us. And he said he went off to college. And when he dropped out of school, he became homeless because he was living in the dorms. And he said, what I should have done was go home. But it took me 25 years before I finally went home. When you have your first problem, Call your parents. Call me. Come home. We're here for you. We care for you. And we're in this journey together. Go, but also remember where home is. Where have you been? Where are you going? What will you take with you? But also, what will you give? This is a neat group of young adults, talented, with a lot to offer and give. Now, I hope that you take with you a great experience from your growing up years here. But don't just be a taker. Don't just be a consumer. Also, be a giver. Find something that matters to you and give to it. Give your time, your attention, give your passion and your talents to something that matters in this world. Something with meaning and purpose. 
And I'm confident that what you'll find is grounded in the love of Christ. The beginning and the end, the old and the new. This is a time of change and a time of transition. But remember God's story. Pay attention to how your story fits with God's story. The story of God begins with the tree of life, And the story of God ends with the tree of life. The question is, what happens in between the trees? There's still a lot of this story to be told. Make it a good story. Go. Go out into the world, learn, grow, live, and may you experience life that is truly life in Jesus Christ. To God be the glory now and forever.